Hello everyone, welcome back to Mr. Smelly's Fragrance Reviews. Before we get into today's fragrance video, I'm going to plug a new thing I'm going to be doing on the channel, a non-fragrance related thing. There's going to be a weekly episode now of a new series called News Busters, where I'm going to expose the news stories buried by mainstream media. Coming up soon in episode one, is this the picture that proves the moon landings were faked? Revealed how David Bowie made thousands from illegal puffin farm in the 1980s. And our sources reveal that at this meeting, Donald Trump saw the funny side when North Korean Premier Kim Jong-un admitted to him that in 2015, he drunkenly decided to launch a nuclear attack on the United States, only to find he couldn't remember the launch codes. Don't miss it to see these and more of the stories they tried to bury. Hello everyone, welcome back to the Mr. Smelly Fragrance Show. So today we're gonna to have a look at my favorite purchases of 2020 so far. There are some stunning fragrances in here. Uh, there's everything, designer, niche, vintage, bit of everything. These are the absolute highlights of the many fragrances I've bought this year so far. I'm gonna flip the camera angle and give center stage to the scents themselves. Let's get stuck into it. These are my favorite purchases, I think, so far of the year 2020. I've bought a hell of a lot of stuff this year, as I kind of always do. I don't encourage you guys out there necessarily to go around spending lots of money every single month on fragrances. I've got a YouTube fragrance channel. It's a huge part of my life, and therefore, of course, I've got a good reason to buy stuff. So let's go for my first favorite pick, which I got just recently, and I'm super thrilled with this fragrance. This is Luciano Pavarotti, a men's fragrance, first released in 1994. I think there's another Pavarotti fragrance. It might be called Pavarotti Porom or something else, but this, this was the original men's release from, of course, the very famous opera singer, Luciano Pavarotti. It actually came with a really nice presentation thing. I got it on eBay. There's even a signed photo. I think it's genuinely signed by him, so this might be worth quite a few quid. And um, he was a famous opera singer. I think he passed away around about 2007, something like that. Perhaps at the peak of his fame was around about 1990, when he was part of a, a new three opera singer thing. With uh, It was called The Three Tenors with, uh, oh God, their names now escape me, but two of the other really big names in opera singing at the time. And they kind of toured the world doing this thing called The Three Tenors. Anyway, the fragrance is an absolute stunner. Uh, kind of a, a bit of an old school vibe, but a real complex uh, maybe a little bit niche smelling I think fragrance I guess you'd kind of originally put it in the well a celebrity fragrance I doubt it was a total cheapy like a Rihanna fragrance or anything like that I don't know how much it first cost when it came out uh, but it's got a niche quality to me I picked mine up for 60 something pounds which I was very lucky it's long discontinued very hard to find and uh, the first person who introduced this one to my consciousness was Chris from the excellent channel Scentland. The notes include honey, patchouli, leather, there's tonka bean, there's benzoin, there's a lot of spiciness, there's cloves, I think there's a bit of iris in there apparently, which I didn't pick up on. Some people have compared it, and I get their point, to vintage Givenchy Gentleman, the classic 1974 fragrance, and there is a little bit of similarity, certainly in the dry down, it's a bit of a patchouli bomb, but the opening to me is much more spicy and a little, even a little bit boozy, I think, in the opening. Really, really rich and powerful, boozy, woody, spicy opening. Dries down to retain a lot of that and also have a very, very prominent uh, patchouli note, a little bit of a leathery feel too. Slightly old school, it's sort of a mixture of an old school 70s, 80s powerhouse, but with a, a kind of a touch of your modern niche, rich, sweet, heavy fragrance, making it actually not just smell like it's from back in the, the 70s or 80s, and indeed it came out in the mid 90s. Remarkable piece of perfumery and an incredible fragrance, which I'm, I'm really, really thrilled to have picked up this year. Don't forget, if you'd like to join the Smelly Army Private Members Club over on Patreon, there's a link in the description to do that. It costs just $2 a month and you get an extra video from me every week. Plus you get to watch everything I've already uploaded in there. We're building a really nice community, lots of interaction, and I'd love to see you in there. Moving on to the next choice then. Uh, well, this actually, I'm, I'm going to explain what's going on here. Actually, I'm going to lean it against here. I'll try this. So this is from the fantastic house of Bortnikov. And I've got some samples here of their cologne collection. I actually own amber cologne and musk cologne, which are absolutely excellent. Uh, and I got the sample set of the collection, which comes with a very nice card, which helpfully gives you the notes. And the one that I've absolutely fallen in love with, and which I've just ordered a full bottle of, is Vesna Cologne, which is an absolutely stunningly brilliant fragrance, I think. Um, so Vesna Cologne from the house of Bortnikov. 
we'll just leave it down there. This is a fragrance. Vesna, actually, I believe, is a, a, a mythical figure, a female figure, who sort of represents and heralds the onset of spring in the uh, in Eastern Europe, so in certain Slavic countries, I think including Russia. And I, th I believe the word Vesna actually literally means spring in Russian. The notes on this one, you've got tomato leaf, black tea, lemon, pineapple, magnolia, dried fruits extract, it says, and naga motha. Uh, so it's a fresh woody fragrance. And I actually pick up on a really prominent note, I think, of black Current, which I guess could be part of the dried fruits thing there. Uh, of course, that may remind some of you of a really famous black currant fragrance, Enchanted Forest by Vagabond Prince. And I think there are some similarities with that uh, much heralded fragrance from Bertrand du Chiffre, but this could be even more magical. If you think of that kind of uh, fresh, slightly citrusy, but with so much more to it, a kind of green leafy element. I, I don't pick up on tomato leaf with the hint of tomato specifically, uh, but certainly a leafy feel. I like the idea of Russian black tea being one of the notes. I haven't really um, spent any time with Russian black tea, but there's a, there's a very nice herbal freshness. It's not just a citrus freshie. And this beautiful black currant note in there is phenomenal. Dmitry Bortnikov is the man behind Bortnikov fragrances. He's a Russian born perfume. I think he's based out in Thailand now and he distills a lot of the tinctures for the ingredients of his fragrance. So they're famous for a lot of their oud based fragrances which are stunning and very potent and very complex but some of the fresh ones equally beautiful using really rare kind of a lot of natural ingredients and ingredients you simply won't find certainly in designer fragrances or in many of your mainstream niche ones. Quite an expensive fragrance that I have purchased uh, but it's, it's worth it, I think. I think it's about $220 for a 50 mil. Fantastic presentation on those as well. We've got a picture on the screen of, of uh, the bottle, but that doesn't do it justice. Really, you'll, you'll see the proper thing soon when I get it. So uh, nice performance on both these so far, by the way. Good longevity, just really exquisite and magical fragrances. Moving on then, let's see what's next. Guys, if you're enjoying the video and you haven't already subscribed, please hit that button down below and subscribe. Then you won't miss any of my other future videos, which are all really good. One of the most exciting things that happened to me, of course, this year, and which was a new acquisition, but not exactly a purchase, was my own fragrance, Gravitas Poron, which uh, hit the streets. Well, not really, but it, it hit the availability on the internet in March of this year. And this, we've got some amazing reviews coming from YouTubers big and small and some really nice written ones. So if you're interested to find out about that or even to order a bottle, this stunning Fougere, which I'm just so lucky to be associated with, Gravitas Prom, the brand, Norton and Wilson, that's my surname and my co-collaborator's sur surname. Uh, you can find the link in the description, 90 pounds for your 100 ml bottle, absolute stunner. So next up, this is again sort of a, an under the radar house, as, as is the theme, it seems, with this video. So this is from a house or, or fragrance company called Haeckel's, based down in Margate, near where I live, because uh, I'm in Kent myself too, the same county in England, and it's called Pegwell Bay, although the official name of the fragrance is these coordinates, which cons correspond to a place called Pegwell Bay, which is near to Margate in Kent. So I'll open the box up. We get a great presentation with this one and a slightly unique bottle design. There's this chalk thing in there, which you're supposed to sort of use, I think you spray the perfume on it and it's supposed to infuse your room with that smell. And we get a little card there explaining some stuff about the fragrance, which is a nice touch. Let's just get the bottle out then. And I like the bottle design. It's very unusual, isn't it? And very, very unique. So I really enjoy the way they've done that. And it's uh, a company that's very kind of bohemian. I think this is 100% all natural ingredients, bit of a hipster type of brand. And I think that's kind of a, there's a lot of people like that down in Margate. And it's got the, the name again, kind of on there, just these coordinates, but it, it seems to be called Pegwell Bay on the website, but it doesn't, weirdly, it doesn't actually say it anywhere on the actual bottle. Anyway, just to explain what it's got, the little leaflet there mentions a prominent note of fennel, which is a rather distinctive kind of interesting note. There's definitely a lot of citrus notes in here. They list all the ingredients, literally like the actual which oil of the, you know, whatever thing they've got in there. So there's kind of things like bergamot and neroli, very fresh lemony accords. Um, this really nice kind of outdoors herbal kind of feel. I think seaweed might be even playing a role in here. And if you, if you think of sort of strolling down by the sea in the fresh air, it really captures that kind of vibe. It's, it's a citrus fragrance, I'm just sniffing it. 
but it's so much more than citrus. It's citrus and green notes, very, very much a fresh fragrance. Something weirdly in it actually reminds me a little bit of Aventus. Now, knowing the kind of company they are, I really doubt they were going for that, but it's got that kind of um, freshness mixed with this kind of musky, masculine undertone. It feels quite a masculine fragrance. It's tremendous performance, really a unique freshie, and captures something of the sort of the, the air of the flora and fauna, or maybe of the southern English coast, really skillfully encapsulated in a beautiful, fresh and, and totally unique fragrance. But fresh fragrance fans should enjoy that one if, if you like your Aqua de Palmas, if you like your Creed fragrances. It's got some of the things you love about those, but in a totally unique kind of way. So Pegwell Bay from Haeckel's, if you want to sort of Google it. And I, th I think that was about £160 for a 100ml bottle, so not a cheapie. We better have something a bit more mainstream and designery. So in complete contrast now, here it is, Moschino Toy Boy. This was much talked about when it came out. I think it was either late 2019 or early 2020. And it's got a rather sort of a provocative advert that I've just put on, on the screen there. I kind of like the, I mean, yes, it's an incredibly tacky bottle and presentation, incredibly silly. But it, the novelty factor, I'll give it some plaudits for that, I think. So Toy Boy from Moschino, recent, believe it or not, masculine release. I believe the bear is a sort of ongoing uh, symbol of the Italian brand Moschino. I, I must confess I'm not a huge expert on them. And this one, a really unique modern masculine release, which uh, the kind of slightly almost comical bottle design belies the complexity and, and skill with which this one has been composed. There's a lot of rose in this one. If you like a rose in a masculine fragrance, you may well enjoy it. There's a pear note in here. There's a, a nutmeg note. It's certainly quite spicy. A lot of people have said it's very peppery, and I sort of pick up on that. Vetiver and sandalwood also feature in here. So it's sort of quite a dark and mysterious rose fragrance with a lot of rich, woody and spicy tones mixed in there. Almost a slightly sort of gothic feel, I feel, in this fragrance. Very, very com complex. And for a modern masculine release, something really intriguing. One of these kind of standout fragrances. I can see this one maybe not being a commercial success when you look at that bottle design. It may not appeal to everybody. And I just wonder if in a few years time, this one could be fetching high prices as a discontinued gem on eBay. So Moschino uh, Toy Boy, uh, absolutely fascinating fragrance. Not sure I absolutely love it in terms of, am I gonna wear this a lot out and about? I don't know yet, but I really like the artistry in this one. And of course, it should be wearable too, so we'll see about that. But I'm super happy to have it in the fragrance collection. Let me know if you'd actually like me to do a full review on this one. We can maybe fix that up for you. Okay, moving on. Let's see what we've got next. Just a couple left now. And back to the vintage stuff again. And this is a stunner that's really kind of rare, and, and nobody seems to be into this one or talk about it very much, but I'm, I'm a huge fan. So here we have Charles Jordan Un Homme which I was just sort of surfing through eBay, looking at uh, used fragrances in general. And this one came up and I thought, hmm, that looks kind of intriguing, but I'd never heard of it. So I, I went on Fragrantica and found out a little bit more information. I think it's a 1980 release and it's a stunning aromatic fougere. If you like things like Azaro Pour Homme, maybe Rive Gauche Pour Homme, um, Paco Rabanne Pour Homme, even some people are comparing it to the legendary and hugely sought after and expensive, if you can get it, Patu Pour Homme. Uh, some people are putting it in that kind of league. So a super spicy and rich, complex aromatic fougere, very musky and leathery in its undertones. And actually, I showed it to Claire from the Smurfy Girly channel the other day, and she said it reminded her of hoisin sauce in Chinese cooking and that kind of spice. And I'm pretty, we, we agreed that must come from a prominent star anise note, which is li listed in it and also smells a little bit kind of licorice-esque, shared with things like Azaro Pour Homme and uh, Re maybe Rive Gauche Pour Homme from Yves Saint Laurent 2003 release. So if you like that kind of star anise, a twist of licorice, which often comes in masculine barbershop fougere fragrances, very, very spicy, almost sweet, exotic, unique kind of note. Very, very rich, very potent, and a beautiful, beautiful, masterful aromatic fougere. One of the best vintage things in my collection and a real under the radar gem. Charles Jordan, un homme. The Eau de Toilette, I think it was about, I paid about 28 pounds for that 30 mil there, so that was a good deal. Not, last but not least, um, this one actually arrived today, but I've had my sample for ages, so I know it quite well in its smell. And this is Ninfeo, 
let's try and say this correctly, Ninfio Mio by the House of Anik Guitar, my first Anik Guitar fragrance in my collection, one of the best fig fragrances out there. So it's a fresh leafy green fig fragrance to me. It's got some lovely citrus notes in the opening, almost a kind of neroli meets lemon kind of opening, lovely stuff. It's got that beautiful fig note that fans of things like Fico di Amalfi from Aqua de Parma should enjoy, but it's actually much more green and herbal than that one. That one's to me is just sort of citrus and fig in a very, very pleasant combination. This one, a beautiful balance of that very distinctive, almost milky, creamy fig note, maybe some jasmine, some florals in there. I think one note listing gives a bit of lavender, so it's kind of a clean, fresh kind of vibe overall, but a very dominant fig note mixed in with some lovely citrus and quite complex and sort of creamy, milky, powdery tones, very unisex, in fact, leaning almost to the point where some men may feel that it's a little bit effeminate. Perfect for spring and summer. I'm filming this as autumn is coming, so it's not the perfect time to buy it, but I don't care. Ninfio Meo from Anik Guitar from Paris. Stunning fig-based fragrance, and I picked that one up on eBay. I think it's about 100 pounds retail for 100 mil, but I picked that up for, I think, 40 pounds which again was a great deal. So guys, let me know in the comments below what you thought about all that. Which of these fragrances have you tried and what's your favorite purchase of 2020 so far? And of course, what did you think of mine? Thanks ever so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Remember, whatever you're doing in life, let's project. Bye-bye.